Today I will be showing you this prompt generator that will generate prompts for your AI agents. This agent will take you through a step-by-step -step process and at the end it will give you the prompt with a role, some instructions, rules and examples. I will first build this prompt generator and at the end I will show you the result that it will give you. Okay, so we are in N at N and the first note that you will add is a when chat message received and this will be the trigger of your prompt generator. This message is going to make sure that we can chat with our AI agent and it will also output the result and a prompt that we generated in this chat. After the chat trigger we are going to add our prompt generator and in this prompt generator we are first going to add a chat model. This chat model is going to be OpenAI GPT 4.1 and this is the newest model and it's also one of the strongest models that they have. So this will help us to get a better output from our prompt generator. After the chat model we are going to add our memory and this is pretty important because this will help us to remember 50 of the messages that we have already sent before. And this is also important because this prompt generator is basically going to take you through an interview with all kinds of questions to form your prompt. After the memory we are going to add two tools. The first one is going to be a Tavily tool. The Tavily tool is going to be HTTP tool node and the description is going to be Tavily. The method is going to be post and then the URL is going to be this so it's going to be HTTPS double dot forward dash api dot dot com slash search the authentication will be none and then send query parameters and send headers will be turned off the send body will be turned on and then we will do specify body using json below and here we have created a json script and this json script is basically the format that the tablet tool has to send the data to our n at n workflow so you guys can copy this json script and then the only thing is creating your api key and your API key can be created by going to the Tavly website. So let's do that. Once we are on the Tavly website, we will first create our account. Or if you already have your account, then you can press on login. So I already have my account, so I will press on login. Then after you have pressed on login, here you get sent to the dashboard. And on the dashboard, you can already see the API keys. Here I've already created an API key. But to create a new API key, you will press on the plus icon. And first thing you will do is adding a key name. So the key name for me will be N8N. And then the key type will be on development because we are not sending more than 100 requests per minute. If you are sending more than 100 requests per minute, then you will put it on production. Then the limit monthly usage will be turned off and then we can press on create. Once we have pressed on create, we can see that we have created a new API key. Here it says name N8N. So this is our API key. Then we can copy it, go to N8N and put it in our JSON script. Now we are back in N8N and here we are in a JSON script. So you will enter your API code here. So you will just enter it and then your Tavly tool is set up. After the Tavly tool, we will add an anthropodic think tool. This anthropodic think tool is basically a notepad for our AI agent where it can write down some thoughts when the request gets a bit more complicated. In the think tool, we will do a description where it says, use this tool to think about something. It will not obtain new information or change the database, but just append the thought to the log. Use it when complex reasoning or some cage memory is needed. So here it says that when it gets more complicated or when it needs more memory to store its thoughts, then it can put it in this think tool. And then the last thing for this tool is adding our prompt generator AI agent. And this is the most important part of our AI agent because without this, the whole agent won't work. So in the AI agent, the first thing that you will do is going to your options and then adding a system message. And the system message is going to be role. You are a prompt engineering assistant built into an end end workflow. Your role is to guide the user step by step through creating a structured prompt for an AI agent using a friendly and efficient interview style approach. Then begin the session with a warm and inviting greeting where it says, hello, how can I help you? Then we also gave it some workflow instructions. So these workflow instructions are after each major section, you must use the think tool to reflect on one, whether the section is complete and two, whether the user input is clear and actionable for the AI agent. So here it says that it has to use the think tool that I just mentioned to reflect on all of the data that it has gathered. So here we gave it some more workflow instructions and then the objective is help the user build a final AI agent prompt using the following structured sections. So here we have given it the structured sections that it has to add. Here we have the role, the context, the business slash product overview, the tools available, input variables, instructions, examples, output format, and then rule slash final instructions. The final results must be delivered in markdown format ready to be copied pasted into an AI agent prompt field. And I said this because then it is easier for us to copy the output and then put it in our AI agent because otherwise the format and the structure won't be that nice looking in your AI agent. 
After the objective, we gave it the tools that it is available. So we have the thing tool and the tabli tool. And then after that, we give it the prompt structure flow. So here in the prompt structure flow, we give it after each section, what it should do, how it should act. So this is the first section. Then here we have the section prompts. So here it said role. Then here we have context, business slash product overview, as I just said, tools available. So the thing tool and the tabli tool or the tools that has to be included in this prompt agent. Then five input variables, then six the instructions, seven, the examples. And the examples are very important for your prompt because this will make sure that the output from your agent will be much more accurate and much better. And then eight will be the output format. So the format where it has the output and this is going to be in markdown format. Then the last thing after all of these sections will be a final confirmation checklist. And here it is going to ask if we confirm all of the data that we have given and if we like to change something or if we like to remove or add something to our prompt. And then we also added the format on how it should output all of the data in markdown format. By the way, this workflow will also be free to download. You can just go to our description, download the workflow, then put it in your edit end, and then you only have to fill in some of your data and then it is ready to go. And if you also like this video so far, then do not forget to like and subscribe. Okay, so this was the instruction of how you can create this prompt generator. And now I will show you the result and a step-by-step -step process on how it generates its prompts. Okay, we will just first start by saying, hello. Then we can also see how it will greet us. So here it's a, hello, how can I help you? That's also what we mentioned in our prompt. So then I will say, can you help me with generating a prompt? Then it says, absolutely, I'd be happy to help you generate a prompt for an AI agent. Let's start with understanding the role of the agent. And then it says, what do you want this AI agent to act as? So for this demo purpose, I would just say that it has to be a data analyst. Okay, so I said this agent needs to be a data analyst. So here it is running the workflow. And then it says, next question, what kind of request or task will this AI agent typically handle? Then it will give us some examples. Then it also said, also, is there a particular area or subject matter it should focus on? Sales data, user behavior, or analytics? And then finally for this section, what tone should the agent use? So will the tone be professional, casual, or friendly? Okay, so the instructions that I gave it is the main task of this data analyst is to analyze sales data from my company. Tone of the AI agent should be professional. Okay, so we will send this to the AI agent. Then it will create the prompt and the prompt that it gave us is here's a quick summary of what we have for the role section. So the role of this agent will be a data analyst. It should focus on analyzing company sales data and then the tone should be professional. And then we have to clarify all of this data and we can maybe say if we would change something or if we would like to add something or if we maybe like to delete something. But for now, I will just say, no, can we move on? Then it said, now let's understand where this agent fits into your workflow. And it gave us four questions that we have to answer. The first one is going to be, what exactly does this agent do once it's triggered? Second one is what happens before the agent runs? What event or trigger activates it? The third one is going to be, what happens afterwards? And then the fourth one is going to be, is there any background information the agent should be aware of? So I've created a response to all of these four questions. And I said, once it's triggered, it will look into a Google sheet and search the data that the user has asked. Before it runs, the user gives an input and after it runs, it should act professional and give a clear report. Then the background info will be none because we don't have background info. The workflow runs and here it gave us the output and it basically asked us to clarify the data again. So we can already see a pattern that it starts to form. So after every section, we have to clarify the data and tell the agent that we like it, dislike it, or if you want to add something. Okay, the next question will be perfect. Now let's cover your business slash product overview. And then it gave us three questions. So these questions are, can you describe your business service or product in a few lines? Who is your target customer? And what are some common pain points or use cases you solve? So the answer that I gave to these questions is I have an AI automation business where we help people to build AI systems for their business. The target customer is people who want to save time and money by using AI systems. And some common pain points are that people do not have the knowledge to create complicated AI systems for their business. Okay, so I've sent the message to our generator and here it said, thank you. Here's what I've captured for your business as product overview. Then it gave us a summary and then we have to verify the data again. So we'll just say, let's move on. The output from the AI agent was great. Now let's discuss the tools available to your AI agent. Then it says, does this agent have access to any internal tools or sub workflows? Then they gave us some examples. And here it already summed up the tools that we have. So it said the agent can access a Google sheet to research and analyze the sales data. So here it already captured one of the tools and that will be the Google Sheets tool. So if we would like, we can add more tools, but for this demo, I will just say no, let's move on. 
Okay, so we will move on. The next questions will be, now let's define the input variables. And it gave us two questions. The first one is, what input variables will AI agent receive from the NNN workflow? And the second one will be, please list each variable along with a short description of what it represents. Okay, so I said the user will, for example, say, give me our lead list. Then we'll send it and he'll say, thank you. So for the primary input variables, the input user should naturally language query or request. Here's how I define this tool. And then we have to clarify the data again. Next will be the outline for the instructions of the agent. And the two questions will be, what should the AI agent do once it receives its input variables? And second of all, if you have a step-by-step -step process in mind, I can help map it out in the instructions. I will say no because I do not have any specific steps that it has to follow. So I will say no. And because I said no, it generated the step-by-step -step process for us. And the step-by-step -step process is proposed workflow instructions. First, interpret or understand the user's query from user underscore the query. Then second of all, search the Google Sheets for relevant sales data corresponding to the query. Then three, extract and if needed, analyze or summarize the findings. Then four, compose a clear professional report to present the final result to the user. So I like the step-by-step -step process. I will say, yes, this looks good. And now we can also see that we really needed the 50 messages in our simple memory because we get all so many questions. And if you also want, you can also shorten these questions. But the more questions and the more instructions you have in your prompt, the better the prompt for your other AI agents will be. And this is obviously what you want in the end. So the next step will be where we're going to add an example to clarify how the agent should behave. And here it said, would you like to provide a real example of a typical user request and the expected response? And if we do not have an example, then we can just say no and our AI agent will create an example for us i will say no and here it said no problem i'll generate an example based on your workflow here's what i propose and then it gave us an example and then it nicely said would you like to review or update this example or should we move on to the output format and i will say let's move on Okay, so the next question is now let's define the output format and then it gave us two questions. So the first one is going to be, should the AI agent respond in plain text, markdown or structured JSON? And then would you like the output wrapped or formatted in a particular way for downstream modules? And this is not talking about the AI agent and how we will output our prompt that we are now generating. But this is talking about how the other AI agent should output its response. And here it said, does this work for your use case or do you have a specific preference? And I will just say, I'll put it in structure JSON. And I will move on to the next section. And here we will add the final instructions for our agent. So the question is, are there any strict rules or boundaries this agent should always follow? For this agent, we do not have any extra boundaries. So I will just say no. And then we'll move on. It said, thank you for confirming. We'll proceed without any extra strict rules or boundaries. Before I generate your complete AI prompt, let's do a final confirmation checklist. And this is also what we discussed in our prompt. So this checklist will be, does this agent behave in the way you expect? For, for us, it is yes. Does this tone match your brand or industry style? And our tone was professional, so it does fit our tone. And then the last question is, are there any tools, input variables, or steps you may have forgotten to include? And for us, this will be no. The agent is finished and here it gave us our prompt. So it will be your complete AI agent prompt. It gave us the role, it gave us the context, our business slash product overview, the tools available. So it only is the Google Sheets that we have discussed. Then the input variables, the instructions for the AI agent. And then it also gave us some examples, so the examples. And here we have the output format, always return the result in structured JSON format. And then the rules slash final instruction is adhere to a professional tone in all response, only answer based on actual data found in the Google Sheet. So it will not hallucinate or use other weird data that is just came up with itself and be clear and precise and avoid unnecessary information. So this was the output and the result that we got from our prompt generator. And I personally really like it. If you have any questions left about this prompt generator, then leave a comment down below and I'll see you in the next video.